What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and welcome to your stimulus check update, stimulus package and infrastructure update for Monday, July 12th. There is a lot of stuff that we need to discuss in today's video. There is a lot of st stuff currently going on. First, the Senate returns to Washington today. They will pick up their normal course of business. The House will actually return to Washington next week. So they will actually be on a three week recess but they will be coming back to hopefully a fully loaded schedule. What we know is that the Senate is using this week to try to finalize the details of the bipartisan infrastructure package and they are trying to also finalize details of the budget reconciliation bill which is that Democrat only partisan plan. We do know that there's still disagreements on how the bipartisan bill is going to be paid for. Mitch McConnell has stated, and, and this is something that we know and we have seen in the past, Mitch McConnell, even though he's not in favor of this bipartisan bill because he does believe it's actually too expensive, he does say that he would consider this bill, however, it has to be fully paid for. If this bill is not completely paid for, then he will not support it. This is also a similar consensus amongst other Republicans as well, is if we are seeing that there's not a clear uh, defined plan as to how this bill will be paid for, then they are not going to support it. So even at this time, even though this is a bipartisan bill amongst multiple Republicans and Democrats, it's a group of over 20 senators, including Senator Mitt Romney and Senator Joe Manchin. The problem is they're still working to get this figured out and determine how it's going to be paid for. Will it be paid for through tax increases? Because if that's the case, we know Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is going to oppose that and so will many other Republicans as well. And even Senator Joe Manchin would most likely oppose this also. So there's a lot of issues. There's a lot of fighting going on back and forth. But here's something that we need to understand. This is just one bill. And this bill is holding up the next bill, the social infrastructure package, the possible stimulus package, which may include a stimulus check. And there's actually some very good news that is coming out of all the talks that are currently going on. There's some very good news that's coming out, which we could potentially see a stimulus check make its way back into the forefront of this infrastructure package. Well, this could be coming in September. So I wanna break down what's happening and I wanna explain exactly what we are gonna see as we move forward. But here's something that you need to understand. Right now, the Democrat only partisan bill, this is that budget resolution bill with reconciliation instructions. Again, so co confusing, so complex, but it's actually pretty simple, right? It's just another bill. But what you need to understand is Senator Bernie Sanders, he said he would not support a bill if it's under $3 trillion. Senator Joe Manchin states he would not support a bill if it's over $2 trillion. Well, those are two big forces in the Senate. Those are two very important Democratic votes. Well, what we know is according to experts, they're predicting that this package is most likely gonna be right about $3.5 trillion. You're probably thinking, oh, well, that's good for Bernie Sanders because that's higher than $3 trillion. But it's not good for Senate Senator Joe Manchin. Here's the problem. These experts are saying that the, the $3.5 trillion is the bipartisan bill and the, the stimulus, this social infrastructure package combined. Well, we know the bipartisan bill is going to be about $1.2 trillion over eight years. That means that the Democrat only bill would have to be uh, about $2.3 trillion over eight years. That's far less than what Senator, Joe, or Senator Bernie Sanders is going to support. And that's a little bit more than what Joe Manchin would support as well. But that's what experts are currently predicting is that's what we're going to see. Now, I want to bring this up for one main reason. The reason I bring this up is because currently the, the, the House and the Senate, they are very, very close. These are narrow majorities for Democrats. And I say this because some economists are saying that this, these bills are going to be almost impossible to pass. And simply because the budget reconciliation bill of 2.3 trillion, well, that would mean there's a lot of priorities that would have to be pulled out. For instance, we may not see a large expansion to, to Medicare. And this is something that Bernie Sanders says must be included. 
We may not see a large, uh, you know, a whole lot of money in this for climate change. Well, what are we going through? I live in Washington State. In Washington State, we've had a, it's been pretty hot lately, right? Same thing for Oregon, California. Uh, you know, Death Valley has been pretty hot. We got, you know, you know climate change. There, there's th things are happening, right? Well, this is what we are hearing. We may not see a lot of money for this. And then just the other day, we heard multiple lawmakers state if they do not, if we do not have a, if we do not have immigration in the next infrastructure package, we will not vote yes. So that is another issue. We got to stick in immigration. But some say immigration is not part of this. And then the other day, I brought you know a couple of updates to you that immigration has to be included. But at the same time, the Capitol Police are needing money. And if they don't have money within the next month, they're actually going to run out of funds and they'll have to actually furlough some of their uh, police officers. And do you think Nancy Pelosi is going to go for that? Probably not. So what we're hearing is right now there's chances that we see a lot of stuff coming out of this next bill. We may not see an extension of the child tax credits, which are supposed to come out on Thursday. This is the $250 or up to $300 per child, depending on their age. This is going to be payments for the next six months. And then you'll get the rest of that, the 18, up to $1,800 on your tax return when you file in 2022. These might not be extended. And here's the big one. Chances of seeing a stimulus check greatly fall as well. If we only see $2.3 trillion, even though the last American Rescue Plan was $1.9 trillion, about was it 40% of that went to stimulus checks, right? Or, or was that 25%, something like that? 25% of that bill went to stimulus checks? That's huge. We, we don't have that luxury in this package because President Biden and Democrats want to include so many other provisions as well. Well, here's what you need to understand. We could potentially see stimulus checks come back, but they probably will not come back in the next couple of weeks. We're not going to see that. What we're going to see is lawmakers are going to fight to get their priorities and their plans, what their uh, constituents want, they want to get that into this next bill. What we know as economists are talking about so many things right now, but many are stating that the economy is rebounding and that the federal government needs to consider extending some of the past stimulus packages that provided so much relief. Here's what we know. These economists are saying that businesses are really picking back up, but this is due to the part of the PPP program. So should we see additional PPP funding? Some say yes, that we need to provide one more round of funding for the PPP program, but make this even more targeted to very specific groups, very specific businesses. This would include restaurants who are still struggling to open back up. We also know the unemployed received a huge, huge break when, uh, you know, back for the CARES Act, millions of people when they were laid off back in March of 2020, they started to receive a $600 per week boost on top of their state unemployment pay. This was huge. These $600 per week boosts were then followed by a $300 per week boost that helped millions of people and gave them a lifeline to put food on the table, keep a roof over their head, continue to pay their bills, and even have somewhat of a cushion, right? Well, we also know that direct payments were a huge, huge asset as well. These roughly $870 billion in stimulus payments, these helped trillions or actually millions of people with trillions of dollars, right, or about a trillion dollars worth of, uh, worth of assistance. This helped so many people. Lawmakers say that they want to see a fourth stimulus check, and this is mostly coming from progressives, but some moderates do say they would support a fourth stimulus check. The problem is who would it go to? How much would it be for? And who exactly would be targeted in this? Now, moderates in the House and Senate are making things a little bit more difficult and a little tricky trying to get an infrastructure package deal with stimulus checks. 
What we know is it's tough to navigate. It's very tough to negotiate. Experts believe that another round of direct payments will eventually come, but like I have stated for over a couple months, is that this will most likely come in the form of a different style of payment. If we see these stimulus checks, they could actually be hidden and they, some, behind something like a child tax credit, a parent tax credit, a stimulus advance, a stimulus credit, right? It's not gonna be a stimulus check like we are accustomed to seeing. It would be something a little bit different. And this is just because some lawmakers don't wanna see that stimulus is included because the American people don't need it because the economy is rebounding greater than many people expected. Well, here's what I can tell you. This week is the beginning of the $110 billion program for the child tax credit payments. I bring this up because this is going to provide extra money to millions of families. About 36 million households are gonna receive this. The child tax credits that come out on Thursday, well, many argue that until they know the impact of these payments, they're not gonna come out and, and be in support of an extension of the child tax credit payments because they wanna see the data first. So they say that they would support a bill if the data comes back and says, yes, the American people needed this money. Yes, the American people are using this money. And yes, this is pulling millions of children out of poverty. Then and only then will these lawmakers support an extension of the child tax credits. Well, this is where the issues begin. What we know is the Senate is going to begin their work this week. That's good news. But the goal, and again, when I saw this, I thought, you know what? That's kind of the writing's been on the wall for a little bit. But the goal here for the Senate is to have the text of both the bipartisan bill and the Democrat-only partisan budget reconciliation bill. They want to have the text of this before they leave on their August recess. Okay, well, that comes in a couple of weeks, two to three weeks, right? Well, here's what you need to understand. They do not plan on voting on either one of these bills until they come back from their August recess in September. So yes, they are simply gonna wait around with finalized text, legislative text of these bills, and they're not gonna vote on it. They will not vote on it until they come back in September. Here's the reason for that. Okay, and I stated this, uh, I stated this last week. I actually stated this probably a month ago as well. And it's something that I continue to believe as well. And this is something that now experts and reports are also bringing up is that unless we see a major change and economists don't believe we're gonna see this change, but if we see a major change, then lawmakers may decide to vote on this bill early. However, a budget reconciliation bill takes so long to just be able to vote on that they're starting it now means they will have to wait probably an additional 30 days before they can actually vote on it. And the Senate and the House, Nancy Pelosi and Senator, uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer are not gonna call back their caucus simply because they wanna vote on a bill possibly a week early. So what this means is we are gonna see the votes on, this, on these bills, again, they have to go in tandem. According to Nancy Pelosi, if the Senate doesn't pass the budget reconciliation bill first, she will not put the bipartisan bill on the floor of the House, which means they have to go together. Well, this means the bipartisan bill, even though they could have full support, all the votes they need, they're not gonna vote on that until the Senate passes the budget reconciliation bill, which chances are it won't come until possibly the first couple weeks of September. So here's the reason why I bring this up. What also, what also happens in September? Well, we know the, the CDC eviction moratorium, this expires at the end of this month. So in like 18, 19 days. We also know the unemployment benefits for the entire United States expires on September 6th. This is more big news. We also know the child tax credits that come out this Thursday, we would see a July payment. We'd also see an August payment. We should have data from the July and August payments by the first couple weeks of September. So what does this mean? Well, if we see all of this, if we see the Senate and the House are they're comfortable with waiting until September, we could potentially see there would be an additional need for more stimulus, more, right? More payments 
we could see a greater need for stimulus checks. We could see a greater need for more unemployment benefits, funding for struggling businesses. This could come to that forefront as well. And other things as we move into another tough part of the year, according to health experts, many health experts are currently warning that the United States is most likely headed for a similar situation as this past winter. Maybe not 100,000 COVID cases per day, but we could see a surge in cases. We could see a surge in deaths. If this does happen, then many are saying that we would most likely see more mask mandates, potentially some additional uh, restrictions as well. Maybe not open up the economy 100%. Maybe restaurants don't go to 100% capacity and they stay around 50%. Well, if you stay around 50% for a restaurant or any type of business, do you need 100% of your staff working that day? No, you don't. So again, this could create more layoffs. Again, it's just that cycle that we're going through. So. Some are saying, some experts do believe that if we see votes happen in September, chances are over the course of August, when, the, when Congress goes on recess, chances are we will see some changes to the legislative text. We will see some different plans and provisions. And chances are within the last couple days before the bills are voted on, we will see changes. We will most likely see another ask another push from progressives and Democrats for an additional stimulus check, we would most likely see some form of extension of the unemployment benefits. Chances are it will not be $300 per week as a boost because the reports are indicating and there are studies that do indicate this, that yes, these $300 per week boosts are actually a disincentive to get people to go back to work. So we will see what happens there. But as I know more, I promise I'll fill you in on all this latest news and updates. Now, let me get into some of the COVID news for today. First, Pfizer last week actually stated that they will be requesting uh, FDA authorization for a booster shot for the COVID vaccine. Well, the, the US health experts and the health officials were actually taken back by this. They were not ready for this. They didn't know that this request was coming. So Pfizer, and, to, and this is gonna happen today, Pfizer and US health ex officials are actually discussing the COVID, COVID booster shot today. Lawmakers say that they were just caught off guard, or uh, health experts say they were caught off guard, weren't expecting this. So Pfizer announced that they will be meeting with them today. They want to discuss first moving forward with this, uh, and then they will discuss the authorization. However, Pfizer does honestly believe that a, a COVID booster shot will be needed. Some experts were saying that they predicted that the booster shot would be needed, but it's not something that they needed right away. So this is one of the reasons why they were somewhat caught off guard by this uh, update and uh, announcement. So. This is what we know as of today. Like I said before, uh, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. Hopefully you guys had an incredible weekend. If you have any questions whatsoever, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. Just wanna thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Also hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys on the next one.